Imagine a tech product with a clean design that has no ports, no buttons, nothing. No, not those concept phones from Vivo and Meizu. No, not them. It's a real product shipped to tens of thousands of real people. Now you might be wondering, did any product like that even exist? Yes, it did. And that product is none other than the third generation iPod Shuffle. Launched in 2009, this shuffle bought nothing with confusion to the tech space. I mean, think about it. If the previous two shuffles users did not complain about the presence of physical controls, then why remove them? In this video, let us understand why does this iPod even exist? Before we start discussing about this particular shuffle that I have in my hand right now, let us reflect and revisit why the shuffle line existed in the first place. The iPod shuffle is analogous to the Mac Mini, since the latter was aimed at shrinking down the size of the Mac, thus making it more affordable. The shuffle had similar aims to take the successful iPod formula, shrink those soap bar sized devices down to something more portable and make them cheaper. This strategy worked wonders for Apple and the first gen iPod shuffle, the one that looks and functions like a USB stick, received rave reviews and sold really well. The second gen shuffle released in January 2006 shrank down the footprint even more and it too sold well and got positive reviews. And after 3 years in March of 2009, we got this, the jaw-droppingly small iPod. The Shuffle 3 is one strange device, and it's tiny, only as big as an eraser stick. It has an anodized aluminium casing, though there was a special edition available, which had a polished stainless steel casing. The clips for the first time in the Shuffle lineup was made from stainless steel, instead of the brushed aluminium used in the previous Shuffle second gen. The sides and the bottom are completely empty. Most of that action is on the top, where there was a 3.5mm headphone jack, an LED that showed the charging status and the slider to toggle between off, loop and shuffle. That headphone jack is pretty interesting because it acts as both a port to connect your iPod Shuffle 3 only headphones, more on that later, and as a port to be used for the iTunes syncing. Yes, a USB connection via a headphone jack. A USB to 3.5mm cable was provided in the box and it looks like this. At launch, the Shuffle 3rd Gen was offered in a 4GB model, but was refreshed in mid-2009 with three new colors, namely blue, pink and green, and a cheaper 2GB model was introduced alongside the existing 4GB model. The 4th Gen iPod Shuffle launched only with a 2GB option, making the Shuffle 3 the only iPod to have a 4GB option. While the iPod Shuffle 3rd Gen was unique and attractive, it had one major design flaw that limited the usefulness of this shuffle quite significantly. Remember the iPod Shuffle 3 only headphones that I mentioned? Well, they were necessary for controlling the iPod. All the controls have been built into the headphones itself, leaving for an iPod that did not have any physical controls and it also did look sleek though. The problem with this approach was that it limited what headphones you can use with it. Moreover, if you misplace those headphones like I did, then there's no way to control this iPod. There was an adapter released by companies like Belkin and Scosh, which allowed the use of third-party headphones, but this was still an inconvenient approach, and it defeats the purpose of an affordable and easy-to-use music player. The Shuffle 3 does have some target audiences. The first and primarily the main types of people who bought the Shuffle 3 would be the active type of people. These people do a lot of running, workouts, exercises, etc. The Shuffle 3's small profile meant that it was really convenient for them to clip it anywhere they want. Moreover, the design itself was quite durable since it was built with metal all around and also there was no need to worry about damaging displays and the like. The daily audiences would also use the Shuffle 3 for that small profile. Most people use the bundle headphones anyway, so it might be a good fit for them. Lastly, the fans of the Shuffle line would probably use the Shuffle 3 instead of other options 
just for that 4 GB of storage. As stated earlier in the video, the Shuffle 3 was the first and only Shuffle to have a 4 GB option. There may be other use cases as well, but these are the three plausible use cases that I could come up with a product that is so different. But I'm not a user amongst those three use cases I mentioned. I misplaced those bundle headphones, so the device only plays in autoplay mode without the option for me to control the volume. That's quite useless then, since it's more like a music loop app that I programmed with Scratch or Python. So this iPod Shuffle 3 is officially e-waste. Or is it? Fortunately no, I still have the USB data cable at hand. And all iPod Shuffles are formatted with the FAT32 file system. Basically, this Shuffle 3 is formatted like any other USB stick. Which means, the only last use case that I can come up with is to use it like any other USB drive. Just plug the 3.5mm end of the iPod, prop the USB end onto a computer, format it and voila! you got yourself an Apple USB. The Apple USB that I just made now is not really useful since I have only 1.8 gigabytes out of the 2 gigabytes of available space. But then again, this is better than it simply sitting in some cabinet piling up dust as it's not used for a long time. Well, that was quite fun, taking a look at possibly the strangest tech product that I've come across. Had the Shuffle 3 allowed for third-party headphones, this would have been a killer product. The ironic part is that even Apple knew this was a bad concept. The Shuffle 3 was discontinued in 2010, a year after its release. In comparison, the Shuffle 4th gen or the last Shuffle lasted for a good 7 years before being discontinued in 2017. And there you have it, the iPod that became one of my storage devices. What about you? Did you own an iPod Shuffle 3rd generation? How was the experience of you using one of these? Let us know in the comment section below.